So today we're diving deep into the world of stereochemistry. Specifically, we'll be covering relative and absolute configurations, two concepts that are essential for understanding the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms and molecules. This is a critical topic in organic chemistry, so let's break it down step by step. Alright, so let's clarify the difference between relative and absolute configurations. Relative configuration is all about understanding how the spatial arrangement of atoms in one molecule compares to another molecule. This is often useful when you want to determine whether two molecules are enantiomers, diastereomers, or simply the same molecule. On the other hand, absolute configuration describes the exact 3D spatial arrangement of atoms around a chiral center, independent of any other molecules. It's like having a map with exact coordinates, so you know precisely where every group is located around the central atom. The terms R, rectus, and S, sinister, are used to denote absolute configurations at a chiral center. But how do we assign these labels? Let's break it down with a systematic approach. All right, so let's start with E and Z configurations, which are used for alkenes with multiple substituents. Here's a quick mnemonic. Z stands for Z-aim side, and E stands for E-posit side. To assign E or Z configurations, we use the Conning-Gold prelog priority rules. We look at the atoms directly attached to each carbon of the double bond. The atom with the higher atomic number gets the higher priority. If there's a tie, we move outward atom by atom until the tie is broken. If the two highest priority substituents are on the same side of the double bond, it's Z. If they're on opposite sides, it's E. All right, so now let's move on to R and S configurations, which are used for chiral centers. To determine whether a chiral center is R or S, we follow a four-step process. Step one, assign priority to the four substituents attached to the chiral center using the Kahn ingold prelog priority rules. Step two, orient the molecule so that the lowest priority group is pointing away from you. If this is difficult, you can use a trick. Switch the lowest priority group with the group at the back of the molecule. Just remember, if you make this switch, you'll need to invert your final answer. Step three, Draw a circle from the highest priority, one, to the second, two, and then to the third, three. If the circle is clockwise, the configuration is R. If it's counterclockwise, it's S. Step four, write the final name of the compound, including the R or S designation in parentheses before the name of the molecule. All right, so now let's talk about Fischer projections. These are a common way to represent molecules with chiral centers especially in carbohydrates and amino acids. In a Fischer projection, horizontal lines represent bonds that come out of the plane of the page, and vertical lines represent bonds going into the page. To determine the configuration using a Fischer projection, one, identify the lowest priority group. If it's on a horizontal line, you'll need to remember that it's pointing out of the page. Two, follow the same steps to assign R or S, but remember that with Fischer projections, you may need to mentally rotate the molecule or make switches to properly orient the lowest priority group. A handy trick with Fischer projections. If the lowest priority group is on a horizontal line, you can determine R or S as usual, then take the opposite of what you find. This is because horizontal lines point out while we generally want the lowest priority to point in. All right, so why does this all matter, especially if you're headed into a career in health or biotech? Stereochemistry plays a critical role in how drugs interact with biological systems. Many drugs are chiral, and often only one enantiomer is therapeutically active. The other enantiomer might be inactive, or worse, harmful. For example, the thalidomide tragedy in the 1960s showed us the importance of stereochemistry. One enantiomer of thalidomide was an effective sedative, while the other caused severe birth defects. This is why modern drug development places such a strong emphasis on understanding and controlling stereochemistry. In biotechnology, stereochemistry affects how enzymes and substrates interact, how DNA replication and transcription occur, and how proteins fold and function. It's a fundamental concept that underpins much of molecular biology and pharmacology. All right, so to wrap up, understanding the difference between relative and absolute configurations, mastering E and Z and R and S designations, and knowing how to manipulate Fischer projections are crucial skills in organic chemistry and beyond. These concepts aren't just academic, they have real-world applications that can impact medicine, biotechnology, and healthcare. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more chemistry content. And if you're using the King of the Curve app or web app, leave a like there and comment on what topic you'd like us to cover next.
check out the app for even more in-depth material. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.